Hello and welcome back, and that is right, we're continuing the subject of Gen 5 SSDs. It's going to be something of a hot topic this week, and today we want to talk about the brand new Samsung 990 Evo SSD uh, that has been kind of intermittently leaked over the last few weeks, but pretty much the bang the nail on the head happened in the last 24 to 48 hours over on computerbase.de. For those that aren't aware, um, Samsung have always been around in the SSD market, both consumer and they're at the business and enterprise sector and in the previous generation the gen 4 uh, generation they kind of made the biggest splash alongside wd back in late 2020 with the release of the samsung 980 pro pretty much smashing everyone out of the water with their 7000 megs ssd kind of catching everyone unawares and letting everyone having to play catch up this is why a number of us are kind of surprised it took samsung this long to release their consumer grade gen 5 ssd not just that, but the actual drive itself. This, the Samsung 990 Evo, their first Gen 4 M2 NVMe SSD. But once again, as mentioned, credit where it's due, straight over there on computerbase.de. They kind of consolidated a lot of the readily available leaks and information thus far. Everything from uh, specifications that were leaked on official Samsung pages as well on one of their um, own outlet sites there on another part of the world. Down there, you can see the 990 Eve. And even though a lot of the information has now been scrubbed, the same goes when you head over to that article. You can find out more information about it. it actually arrived on Amazon very, very briefly over in Germany with uh, the 1TB at 115 euros and the 2TB at 190 euros. And alongside that, on the PCIe SIG pages listing um, uh, listings for the 990 Evo, although uh, the PCIe uh, attributed lanes there are slightly different to what we've seen since on a lot of the reports. But back to the drive itself. Now... Why am I being so weirdly tentative about driving this drive? That uh, The main reason being, this is not the same as all the other Gen 5 drives in the market, for both good and bad reasons. The first thing you need to know about this drive is it's somewhere, it's not actually strictly a Gen 5 drive. It's a Gen 4 times 4 and Gen 5 times 2 bandwidth drive it's allocated in a gen 4 lane you can utilize it at times four times four which will afford it the ability to take advantage of um, up to 8,000 megabytes per second of bandwidth there traditionally and on the gen 5 connection if you are using uh, a gen 5 m2 slot on your modern pc or even a gaming system you're not going to be able to use five times four you're going to be using five times to it limits itself down to that alongside this it's also a drive that is arriving without dram it does not have memory on board instead focusing on the utilization of the host client system memory otherwise known as host memory buffer where a small area of memory on your windows or mac system is being used instead of the onboard memory that an ssd would normally have an ssd is comprised of the controller which is kind of the cpu the nand which is the storage space that nand flash and finally the memory there on board the dram there and this drive does not have it so the performance numbers on this drive for the specification i've just outlined you probably, you know, anticipating them being slightly lower than a number of Gen 5 drives out there. And frankly, strap in. Because the drive's reported maximum speed on the 2TB model there is 5,000 megabytes per second max uh, sequential read and 4,200 sequential write. Now, to put that into perspective, most Gen 4 drives released at the moment have a sequential read of 7,000 megs. Now that 5,000 reported there, it doesn't look like that's going to be only if you're using the Gen 4. That is the speed you're going to get on both the Gen 4 and the Gen 5 architecture, depending on when you deploy this um, uh, SSD. On top of that, that lack of DRAM on board, although it will probably save five to ten dollars on a drive, it's worth remembering it does still mean you're going to have to rely on a client host system, again, a Windows or Mac system or a Linux system that will allow the drive to utilize the memory. Some systems are closed systems that won't allow it, such as when we tried DRAMless drives in a PlayStation 5 system um, early last year when uh, WD rolled out some DRAMless drives. The host system, that PlayStation, was not able to take advantage of HMB uh, memory allocation on behalf of the drive, and it resulted in much poorer sustained performance overall. 
Now, the majority of these specifications have been achieved either uh, have been attained either from the computer-based article, which consolidated a lot of that leaks, and again that will be linked in the description. But on top of that, because there are stark contrasts and comparisons to be made against this drive here, uh, the older PM1743. This was Samsung's enterprisey. Uh, business flash drive there. This has been around for a while. We even saw it at Computex last year. And I would say, although that's enterprise -y, you know, target market there, it does look like there's a lot of carryover between the components. We're still waiting for confirmation on the NAND, but it looks like it's going to be the 176 TLC NAND there, which will be in stark comparison to a lot of the Gen 5 SSDs being revealed at uh, CES 2024 right now. We talked about the Sprint yesterday, but there's a bunch of others from Team Group and more. And all of those drives are rocking out the gate with 232 layer 2400 uh, MTS Micron NAND, that B58R, which again provides that those drives with an extra bit of performance. And those are 5 times 4 drives, and they are drives with, NAN, uh, with uh, DRAM on board there. So they're going to benefit from all of those. So the big question for a lot of users is going to be, why did Samsung roll this drive out as their first consumer Gen 5 drive? This is not an official launch, by the way. Um, indications, again, from information found by a computer base when they saw some of the information appear online before it was taken down on those Amazon pages, um, seem to indicate that either official launch or at least release is going to be towards the end of this month, with details listing um, availability and delivery uh, the 25th of January and the 24th of January. So it looks like we're going to see a more formal official announcement towards the end of the month. Hopefully, they will launch a second drive alongside this, some kind of Samsung 1000 Pro or a 990 Pro Plus or something, who knows? Because right now this drive, although technically it is a consumer drive, it's not really a consumer drive. So first up, let's dig into that decision there for this drive being uh, Gen 5 times 2 or Gen 4 times 4. So for a while now, for about 12 months, there's been this big debate about Gen 5 SSDs and whether you actually can take advantage of that extra speed. For everything from Linus Tech Tips to many tests online, my own included, he said arrogantly. When it comes to the performance numbers that the majority of Gen 5 drives are promoting these uh, these days, such as, again, the Sprint yesterday at 14 gigabytes per second over 12 gigabytes per second sequential read and write, the length of time that number can be sustained on those artificial results, remember that they are synthetic, is up for debate because of drive oversaturation, because of temperatures on the drive being too high, and therefore drives self-throttling themselves for the sake of self-preservation, or simply because... Even though the bandwidth is there, the amount of water being pushed in the pipe is just simply too much. There is an argument that Gen 5 SSDs, although they are available and the client hardware is out there, that you can't really take advantage of it to its full extent yet until the surrounding client environment has been improved upon. Now, in that space, this drive has an element of uh, justification there. You may be, you are looking for a drive on a uh, Gen 4 system, but you want to get a drive with a little bit of future proofing in it. In that sense, this drive might make a little bit of sense. On top of that, if you're running a more curated PC system, so for example, mini PCs, we've talked about it here on the channel, a lot of these mini PCs have to be very selective about the number of lanes being allocated to things like storage, to um, add-ons, to available components internally. They may be using a CPU that runs with, say, six power cores and eight efficiency cores, like a lot of those 12th or 13th gen Intel um, SOC uh, CPUs we're seeing inside. But the creation of the, uh, the allocation of the lanes across the entire system device have to be way, way more curated for reasons of keeping the system at an operational temperature that's acceptable, but also so that they can allocate the lanes to other things that are needed. And in that space, a Gen 5 times 2 drive might make sense when a number of these PCs, much like NASs that have got the M2 NVMEs, but they've reduced the speed of those M2 NVMEs. In this space, a Gen 5 times 2 drive may well make sense. However, that's when this drive moves away from general buy off the shelf into something more of an OEM drive, i.e., you buy a laptop at PC World, you open it up, and this, 
you have no choice in the SSD inside. This seems like one of those SSDs that you're just going to find inside many PCs, find inside a new laptop there, or find inside a pre-built PC system there. Equally, Samsung already has something of a history when it comes to releasing these more affordable drives. A great example before is the Samsung 970 Evo, a drive that sold very, very well, and again, was a drive that most users never even realized they were using because it was slotted inside a lot of laptop OEM straight off the shelf builds there. And it does seem like this drive is going to exist within that space there so keeping it economical keeping it power friendly keeping it heat friendly makes a lot of sense I'm not sure how I feel about the lack of DRAM on this drive because the more I look at it Samsung have still rolled out DRAM on these more economical drives and Samsung themselves did state that prices of uh, a lot of the components within their infrastructure are going to be going up between 10 to 20 percent um, this year going into 2025 Still, nonetheless, I do think there is a target audience for this, but it's a great deal more niche than the majority of other Gen 5 drives out there. Now, for all of that positivity, I do think we have to talk about the fact that if you are someone looking at buying a Gen 5 drive right now, this is not going to be an appealing purchase for the average typical buyer. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here is a comparison I stumbled across myself while looking at Gen 4 drives to make comparisons for against this. As you can see from this chart here on screen, at the Gen 5 times 5 you can see there the gigabit, uh, gigabytes per second there uh, being introduced there at each of those individual lanes. Now, because this is a DRAM-less drive, there is an argument that DRAM-less drives that are always going to have the lower, uh, the lessened performance. Because remember, this is bandwidth, not actual performance there. But earlier uh, or later in 2022, we talked about this drive here, the WD Black SN7700. This is um, a Gen 4 DRAM-less drive. This drive here, when we look at the performance it was throwing out, this is a drive that could achieve 5,150 megabytes per second over 4,850, and with IOPS at 650 over 800. Those are 4K random IOPS. Those are very similar to the numbers of this supposed Gen 5 drive here. So even the numbers that it's throwing out aren't especially unique when you compare against the Ramless drives at the Gen 4 market or even Gen 3 market currently out there. Obviously, a Gen 3 drive is going to throttle things substantially further. I say throttle, it's just not going to have the bandwidth allocation there. And again, when we look at um, that Samsung 970 Evo and we look at the performance numbers that that is throwing out, it should be highlighted that these are going to be in the 3000s there. But still, nonetheless, it does seem like an odd drive for Samsung to be rolling out. And after talking about the, the T7 and the T9 recently, Samsung have been making some very odd choices with regard to the architecture of a lot of their components recently. Then, of course, we've got to talk about durability because this drive... Whether if you want to play devil's advocate and say because that lower performance number or to be on a more, you know, a balanced keel here, we've got to argue that that lower performance number in conjunction with having that DRAMless architecture is going to result in a lower power consumption of the drive itself and therefore the components themselves are going to last that longer. I mean, again, I've had to estimate the terabytes written drive rights per day figures there basing them on the PM1743 and other Samsung drives. But nevertheless, it's still going to be fairly reasonable to assume it's going to be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 uh, drive rights per day for this drive, which is, you know, reasonable for a, definitely for an OS drive. There's not going to be seen consistent rights. But nevertheless, I think there is an argument that for this drive to be Samsung's first kind of consumer Gen 5 SSD, it's not really what everyone's been waiting for there. I do wonder about if this plate here on the top is a copper plate or if it's a sticker. And the images we've seen at the base of the system do seemingly indicate that there is some kind of copper plate there on the base. But overall, I would say this drive here is for what it is for a DRAMless Gen 5 drive in very curated architecture, such as RAID cards, where allocation between each of the individual M2s on a larger RAID card are again going to be very curated. In curated um, deployment, this is going to be a good drive. But I think right now, if you're looking at the 
spectrum of Gen 5 SSDs that are being revealed during CES and some of the later 2023 drives that are out there, this is not going to be a drive that's going to please everyone and I do think this is going to be a background OS drive and hopefully it will be priced accordingly. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll talk more about this drive later in the month going by the indications there on computer base when this drive will almost certainly roll out in one form or another so stay tuned for that and of course we're going to continue talking about Gen 5 SSDs for the rest of this week and almost certainly the start of next week because there are so many to cover at the moment. Thank you so much for watching this article is linked below along with of course uh, the computer base article where a lot of the information today has come from thanks so much for watching hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you tomorrow